My name is Kyle Fortune. I'm going to be your instructor and teacher today. I'm also a work along with uh, Karen and Lauren. And today we're going to have a good time talking about uh, Rosie Lee Tompkins. So this is Rosie Lee Tompkins. And this is one of her, her early quilt, one of her quilts there. And you can look how she used different types of shapes and patterns. Um, and later on, we'll, for sake of time, we'll look at she has using rectangles and triangles and squares. And look how she's doing it. She didn't really use quilts like a lot of people use quilts, which are taking pieces of fabrics, putting them together to create a quilt. Um, she didn't do them for utilitarian functions, which you to use as a blanket. She was more of an artist. And if you look at her style, I like to call it uh, improvisational or also freestyle. So let's just see how she has not so much of an order. Here's another one that you has. Look at the rhythm of her rectangles that she has, really interesting. And look at what she uses. She uses this felt fabric. The felt fabric was associated a lot with her family members. Um, and she liked the texture and, and the feeling. And it has a nice rhythm using not only pattern, but also color. Hmm. Wow. This is, for, for me, it looks like planetary. It's like a planetary piece with the stars in it. And once again, you see how she's using the squares, the nine pad squares, um, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And um, the other shapes that she's using also, the triangles. Also here, you can see, once again, she's using the same sort of patterns. You see more rectangles in some areas that she's using them in a square formation. And she's not really interested that much in organizing sometimes. She's just kind of going with her feeling. So it's more improvisational. How she's feeling and how she collects different materials is actually giving you a sense of where she's going with it. Because sometimes we just kind of go with our feeling, our spiritual feeling in her case. Now, the, the, the design we're going to talk about today is the design in the very top, the mandolin design, which is the triangular design, which is universal in Africa and all over the world, Asia, all over the world. This design is used over and over again. And look how she uses the color in contrast. So contrast means a light color against a dark color and vice versa. Um, so today we'll talk about how she plays with shapes, pattern, texture, and also color. Okay, give it 10 seconds and just reopen it. Yeah, what do you guys see in that one? Look at that one. Look how she focuses on the very center with the different triangles, the lights and darks once again, contrast colors. And then she's just kind of having fun where it's down at the very bottom. She's just kind of creating these sort of square and rectangle pieces inside of pieces. So she's layering uh, the different ideas inside of each other. And each one had their own personality, almost if they had their own sort of community. I like to use them as almost having a community that's separate from the other and having different feelings. Now you can see in this one also, it sort of has the same sort of positive negative feeling where she's using the rhythm of the different colors how they're playing with each other. And if you look at positive and negative, which you can say the positive is the orange and the negative of the background is the dark color, you can see how that pattern sort of floats right through the piece in a very vertical sense. You can see how the oranges kind of move together and then how the blacks can move together and then how the blues move together, okay? In the last piece that we're gonna talk about, um, you can see how she's using religious symbols across. She's using text and words, um, and she's using dates. These are probably dates of people who in her life have passed away, uh, or dates of people, uh, of friends and family, and also scripture. All right. So we talked a little bit about um, Rosie Lee Tompkins. I'm just going to go briefly, and then we'll get right into the activities. Um, Rosie Lee Tompkins was born in uh, 1936 in Gow, Arkansas. Uh, as Effie Mae Martin. Uh, she later changed her name in collaboration with her collector to become um, Rosie Lee Tompkins. 
She later migrated from um, Arkansas to Richmond, California during the 1960s. And she built doing, she began her hobby, uh, the quilt making as a hobby. So what she did is she went to a lot of flea markets and she went to the different areas like flea markets, um, <clears throat> secondhand stores and old clothing. And she um, deconstructed those things and put them together to make her quilt. Um, and she was really inspired to do her quilts by um, her spiritual belief. She was a very religious woman and also her family members. It was a way of keeping her family members alive uh, in her quilts and keeping them present. Okay, first of all, we're going to start our lesson right now. I want to know if everybody has the material. So what I'm going to do is when I hold something up, you hold it up, okay? You should have, have two pieces of contract, contrasting construction paper. Everybody got that? Hold it up if you got it. Two pieces of paper. You got it? Everybody got it. Okay, now here's the idea. You should have one piece that you're going to cut and one piece for your background. Everybody got that? Okay, so your background piece is gonna be on your table right now. Put it down right now, you're ready to go, okay? And your other piece, which is your piece you're going to cut, should be right there on top because we're gonna have to fold this in a minute, okay? Everybody got that? Everybody's got scissors. Everybody, scissors. Scissors present. All right, glue stick. All right, glue sticks. And if you have Elmer's glue, it's fine too. It's fine. All right. Well, let's get started. I'm ready. So the first thing we're going to do is we have to create this square. Okay. So bear with me a second. I'm going to take my sheet of paper here. Everybody take your sheet of paper. Let's get started. Everybody ready? Okay. You're going to watch Mr. Fortune first, Kai, you're gonna watch me first. Now we gotta create a square. So let me put my screen down. Everybody should be able to see that. Now we have to create this square. So you're gonna take your paper, give me the very end of it. You're gonna fold it until you can crease it right in the corner here. You're gonna take that forward. You can't go anymore. It should go right to the edge of the paper. It should go right to the edge. Let me pull this back a little bit so you can see right to the edge, and then you're going to fold that. Everybody's got that? Fold it. Right on the crease right there. Everybody got that? All right. All right. Does everybody? So it should look just like this. It should look just like this. Everybody see that? Everybody show me that. You got that, everybody? Great. All right. Let's get your scissors out. Scissors. Do, 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 do. Scissors. Ready? Now, we're going to cut. Let me show you a little bit. We're going to cut along this line. Can everybody see me? I'm going to cut along this line right quick. We're going to go straight across. Just keep your scissors open and make a continuous motion right across there. Right across. All right. Boom. Got it. Now this is gonna be your scrap here. So keep your scrap and put it to the side. And now we should be, we should be ready with our square. And let's open it up. We have a square. Got it? Now we have to fold it. Okay. And let's see how many times. Everybody ready? Put your paper up if you're ready. Everybody's ready so I can see everybody. Jill, how do I get to the other screen, kids? Oh, they have to do it to gallery I'm fine. I'm just good. Oh. Okay. All right. Here we go. Let's fold it. Everybody ready? You're not, you don't have a... We're going to fold it in half first. Fold your paper in half. Edge to edge. Watch me bring it down here. We're going to fold it edge to edge here. Make sure you go edge to edge. And then you're going to fold it down one time. Everybody got that? Fold it down one time, edge to edge. Then you're going to fold it down one more time. Two times. Got it? Two times. Everybody see that? Good. Then we're going to go one more time, three times. You got to put a little elbow grease in this one. 
So three times, we're going to go three times to fold it down. We got one more time. Let me just, everybody got the three times? See, this is three times. Great. Now we got one more time. And when you do this fold this time, you got to put, put a little pressure on it. We'll put a little pr pressure on it. And I'm going to put my screen down so you can see what I'm doing once again. Okay, and we're going to fold over. Uh, even hard for me. One, two, three, and squeeze down. Uh, press down all the corners. And now we're ready to go. Uh, 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 uh. All right. Now we're going to open up. And let's see how many squares we should have in it. I'm going to count for you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 squares. Got 16, everybody? If you got 16, give me a thumbs up. 16. Boom, boom. Okay? All right, great. Now we're going to take our other sheet of paper, your background paper. Take your other sheet of paper. Okay, you're going to put this one down, put this one away for right now. I want your background paper good. So, so today we have to find the center of this paper, the center. How are we going to find the center of it is we're going to fold it in half. Everybody watching me, we're going to fold it in half like this. And pinch the corners, pinch the corners, pinch them. Don't fold it, just kind of pinch the corners. You can just pinch the corners a little bit. You can show me. And let me bring it down here for people can't see. You can fold the corners a little bit, just like this, lightly, one way. And then you're going to fold it again here. This on the corner here, on this corner that unifies everything, on this corner, we're going to press that down a little bit. And then we're going to open it up. Then we're going to open it up. Everybody you can see that center? All right. If you have a pencil, take your pencil, grab a pencil, and put a dot in the center. So I'm going to show you again. You can put a dot in the center so we can get started. See? I'm going to put a dot right there in the center. So you can put a dot in the center of your page. That's where we're going to start. So the mandolin design is going to start in the center. Everybody ready? Medallion, I'm sorry. And so let's get started. Now, I want you to get your other sheet that you have your squares. Let me see that paper. Get your other square sheet with the squares on it. There you go. Good. There you go. Now, we're going to cut these kind of triangles in half. And I'm going to give you a sort of an idea of what it's going to look like before we get started. It should look like that when we finish up. It has that kind of look. All right? Now, the first thing we're going to do is cut out two squares. Look at me. I'm going to cut out these two squares right quick. Cut out two squares. And then I'm going to cut these two squares, one in half, and we're ready to go. Everybody see my two squares here? We got two squares. Take your time. When you're ready, show me the two squares and we can start. Can you cut them from anywhere? Nope, nope. Hold on one second. I'm going to show you. Yeah, these two you just cut from anywhere. Yeah, the two squares anywhere, it's fine. Okay, everybody ready? So what we're going to do now is create this triangle by cutting one of the squares. You can see me here. I'm going to do it right here in a diagonal fashion <clears throat> from one end to another. And we're going to cut it straight across. One. I got two. I should have four to get started with our design. I'm going to do it again. This is your second one. 
I can take it and cut it straight across here, straight across. Ooh, from one end to another. I like to open my scissors up and create a continuous line, almost like when you're drawing. It's a continuous line. Now, I should have four triangles. Everybody got four? Boom, boom, boom. Okay, let's get started. Now, I'm gonna put my computer down for a second. Everybody grab your glue stick, please, glue stick. And when you're using a glue stick, we wanna make sure we just turn it up just a little bit because we don't want to uh, ruin the glue stick. So we just try to make sure we support and uh, use our uh, materials effectively, okay? Here we go. So the first one, let me do this. I'm gonna put it down. This is gonna be at the very top. So I'm gonna take these and put them away. At the very top, you're going to take this one and put it at the very point. So you put a little glue on the back of it. Look what I'm doing here. I'm putting a little glue here on the back. And in the very top to the left for my left, your right, we're going to take it and put it right on the tip in the middle and glue it down like that. All right. Everybody's got that. And then we're going to go next to it and do it the opposite direction, which is going to be like this. It's going to be right next. Now your triangle, in this case, is going to be diagonally facing the other one. So the straight edge is going to be going out. So it should look just like that. Everybody's got that? And I'm going to show you what it should look like. Let me do this. Give me a second. It should beginning. It should look just like that. The mandolin design should look just like that. All right. Then we're going to move on to the next two steps. And we're ready to rock and roll. Okay, I'm going to put it down, and we're going to move on to the next two steps. Now, we're going to go right underneath this one. We're going to take it and turn it to the top. This straight edge should be at the very top, and we want to always base our design in the center, okay? So the point should always go to the center. I like to put a little glue stick just around the corners makes it a little more effective like that. And here we go with this. And we're gonna put it right here in this corner as that fold we have, it should be right in that fold there. And that's how that step should look. I'm gonna show it to you so everybody can see it. It should look just like that. Okay, everybody ready for the next step? Give me a thumbs up if you're ready for the next step. Okay, take your time. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the next step, the last step. This my last triangle, which looks like this. If everybody can see me, make sure I get nice and effective. There you go. The last one at the bottom is going to be on the line, the vertical line. We're gonna have a straight edge. And this straight edge is going to be right on the center line. And we're going to put a little glue around it. And there we go. That's our basic idea. Look at that. So this should be our basic idea of starting right now. Everybody got it? Can I see it? Whoop, 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 whoop. Great. Okay. Now let's talk about some other ideas. 
I'm going to show you another one. We don't have to do that. We're going to do something different. I'm going to show you what I did, which is a nine uh, patch quilt, which is one, two, three, four, five blank spaces, uh, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine patch quilt. Um, so we have that idea already. Now we're going to look at some other ideas. Here's what I made a chart, and it should have been, um, everybody should have connected to it. Now, we have two things called negative and positive space. Here's a positive space where you have our triangles, and a negative space is the open space, all right? Excuse right me. now, yes? Um, so I was, put, I was still making this while well, you were doing that. So do you mind teaching me how to do that? Because I was, I was still making this. Still making, you know, can you show it to me what you were making? Um, this. Remember the, like, when we did the dot in the middle? Yeah. Um, I didn't do the triangle part because I was busy doing that, this part. Okay. Give so us one you... second. So what I want you to do is... Okay, yeah. You have somebody there that can help you? No, uh, my dad is just talking to me. Okay. Ask your dad if he can help you a little bit, and then you can copy this with this what I have on the screen right here. Okay. All right. Um, so what we're gonna do now is you can take some triangles, look at what you can do. So I wanna play around. I'm gonna show you some examples of what I've done. Um, and I've taken everything from showing you how to use triangle patterns, how to use, you can use, start cutting around it or inside of it. You can use a series of rectangles that I used. So I use rectangles to diagonal rectangles, use it in a different formation, made a shape out of the rectangles. And then also I use a series of circles you can use in a pattern also. And I'll give you a good example of what that looks like um, and let you get started. So I kind of play with squares too. So here's my, one of my ideas that I used, which was using, taking the, the mandolin shape and then putting the triangles inside of that space here. So you can put triangles, other triangles if you want to inside that space. And look also how I use the border. I actually use a series of rectangles. So you can use other construction paper and begin to cut the shapes out. Now remember, you have the original one left, but if you want to use other colors, you're very welcome to do the same thing. And you can be free. And what I do a lot of times is that I just have scraps. I just have scraps. And I can cut these scraps, some of these scraps. I've got colors. And I could take some of these scraps, fold them in half, fold them in quarters. Now I have four shapes. And I can start to cut them. And everybody can start to do their own thing right now. I want you to start looking at what you're doing and start cutting your own shapes. On your screen, you should see you can use rectangles, squares, whatever you like. And in my case here, I've got some rectangles. I'm gonna put these rectangles out here. I'm gonna play around with this area maybe on the outside. And I'm gonna put some rectangles on the outside of my, uh, my design here. And you can start playing around with triangles. And I'm just gonna start playing around with my rectangles here around the outside of it. You can start playing with any design you like. Okay. And if you have strips of paper, give me a strip of paper like this. And you can also just start cutting strips. It's real simple. Get some different colors. Like I did, let's you can start cutting some strips. Look, everybody, if they have the ability, let's start cutting some nice strips. See what we get.
Lauren, can we have a reference? Can we go back to, uh, is it possible we go back to 26? <clears throat> so can everybody can see 26 right now? So you can see your references right now. So you can start cutting squares and playing with the space. You can do triangles. Um, in my case, I'm using these long pieces, long pieces of rectangles right now. And I'm going to play with them. I don't, I don't know. They can go anywhere. I can kind of play around with maybe I want some rectangles around this area. I'm going to sort of play around with different colors. And we can do it like a rectangle around it, like I did here, if you can see mine. So what I did put a rectangle around it. Then I started to work triangles, triangles inside of triangles. Then I did a squares at the top formation. Ooh. Yeah, thank you, Lauren. Of course, I'm going to stop those, sharing. Oh, well, those are great. <laughs> kind of start playing around with the different lines and shape. I'm going to put some lines around mine, just kind of playing around. I cut my lines in half. And remember, it's supposed to be more of an artistic crazy quilt. So you can do any shape you want. You don't have to be regulated to just the basic shapes we did. Start cutting some funny shapes and some really fine shapes to go inside. Kind of having fun with it. I got some lines on the exterior of it. And Kaya, we were thinking maybe about another 10 minutes of activity and then we'll okay. share at 120. Sounds good. Perfect. Thank you. Also, you guys, I have this idea. One more idea, many ideas. I get a piece of construction paper that I have. Can everybody see me? Okay. I'm going to take a piece, these two squares that I had, and I have these two squares, and you know what I'm going to do? If I fold two pieces of paper together, I get two designs, right? So I'm just going to do a free form, which is just cutting like a puzzle shape. I'm just going to cut a free form and see how it comes out and get really into what she would do and she wanted to just do. We could create our own sort of shape with it. And I have these two shapes, look. Woo, it's like a puzzle shape. And I'm gonna put these puzzle shapes right in the middle. Let me glue these down. I'm gonna put these right here in the middle on one side. Oh, nice, nice. Then I'm gonna put it on the other side. Hey, Kaya. Uh-huh. Can you turn your camera to show your workspace? Yes. Sorry about that. Here you guys go. So I'm just putting shapes and just creating a series of shapes to go inside these spaces here, right? And I think I need to turn that around much, much better. There you go. And I'm just having fun. And it's all right if it overlaps their design. It's fine if it overlaps, right? So we're playing with that. And let's get some more color because we have enough orange going on. It's driving me crazy. And so let's get some other color here. Um, I got some... Oh, I love this hot pink. Let's get some red. All right, I got some red here. I like to fold it in half. You guys can cut it. And a good way to do it is you just cut the paper in half. One second. You just can cut the paper in half. Right? And then if you want to fold in quarters, you can fold in quarters too. One, two, three, and four. Now we got four ideas, four ideas. Now, let's say we do a couple of things. Let's do some squares. Why not, right? We did some rectangles. Let's do some square, squares and see what we can do with our square pattern. So I'm gonna cut this rectangle here. I got some rectangles over there. I'm gonna cut a square and then I've got a square and I've got this funny L-shaped pattern that I can use. I don't know where I'm gonna use it. And remember, you can use your scraps. So any scraps you have available, use your scraps to go in there too, okay? So I've got a couple of these squares here. Look, I've got two sets of squares here, right? And I got my two sets of squares and I'm just gonna cut them in half. And then maybe I can create a pattern with the squares. 
So I'm going to put my workspace down so everybody can see it. I'm going to take my red squares and create a pattern. I'm going to create what they call a stair step pattern. And I'm going to begin by putting, uh, oh, I'm like, oh, I can put them in the corner. Oh, God, there you go. It's a space. I got a space. I can put some in the corner there. Um, I can have fun and turn them the other direction. So put the glue stick down on the paper first. And I can turn it that direction. The, all the open space that we have available, just play with it. We're just kind of having fun today. And we just kind of play with the open space. Now I have uh, some open space over here in the corner. And Rosie Lee Tompkins really was about um, improvising as she went along, right? She was just kind of having fun. So if I overlap this on top of this, it's fine. And then I have one more. And then I have one more. So you can see my workspace here. I'm going to go right in the corner here and put another one in there. Wow. Here we go. Now it's coming together. Now it's coming together. Now I have these different colors. And the colors creating a rhythm. So you can see colors against each other, especially when you have the red against the yellow and you kind of have any shapes and patterns against each other. Now, maybe I want to concentrate a little more in these areas that are empty spaces, and I can go play with that. So maybe I'll do a triangle. All right. Can people show me what they're doing right now? So would you guys, guys got some things you want to share? Some ideas you want to share? Just stick it up to the screen. We can see it. Great. Keep going. There you go. Nice job. Nice job. I'm going to try a triangle inside of a triangle. So let's kind of have fun with that. Mm. Also, these are really good when you have these ideas. And so this is the triangle, what I did before, the triangle inside the triangle formation. So you can have that sort of idea. And you can start working around um, your shape right now. Start working around it. So I got some purple here, just kind of playing around. And you know, also you guys, if your shapes seem to be a little big for your space, you can put, like I'm gonna put all my four uh, pieces together here. And if they're too big for my space, I like to whittle them down. And so what you can do is start to cut, maybe on one end, cut a little bit off, there you go, it's too big. And I can cut some of this end off and I can kind of play around and. And maybe I'll just cut a blunt in on that and I can whittle them down to where it looks like that. Now let me see how it fits in my spaces here that I have available. And remember all the scraps you have, you can also just add those scraps. Here I am. So I'm gonna work in those spaces right here by pretty my, just putting a nice little triangle there and a nice triangle here, just kind of playing around with the area and the space a little bit. There we go, play around. Nice color. Color is very important because uh, color gives it rhythm and a nice contrast, which is usually light against dark or dark against light. That's why I'm using this purple right here against this blue to give it a sort of sense of what's going on. Wow, so now it sort of looks, now I add a color to it and it starts to give the piece a little more dimension. It gives it a little more feel to it. Mm. All right. And even later on, when you guys, when the program is over, you guys can continue to work on this stuff. And a lot of times I will take a color, like see this red, these red spots? I may take a, another color, like, uh, oh, let's do purple since I have it here. Maybe I could take a purple and cut a smaller shape, any color you like. Let's use yellow, I like yellow better. You could take this yellow, right? Fold it in half and in quarters like this. Now you have four, once you open up, you have four shapes. 
And what I'm going to do is layer the quilt like she did in a lot of cases. I'm going to cut these four shapes. And then I'm going to put them as a layering piece right on top of a color. In this case, I'm going to use, let me bring it down so you guys can see me. I'm going to use the red. And on the red, I'm going to, here we go. I'm going to put just a little bit here down and layer up the color right inside the other color. Now it gives it a little more dimension. Kind of have fun with it a little bit. And now we're going to just give it a little more dimension with the squares inside of a square. And a square inside of a square. We'll give it some more dimension. And then I'm going to put another square inside of a square. You guys can see that. And now we have something totally different going on. I really appreciate everybody being creative, just using the concept and then using their own concept with it. So remember, we all get, all artists get ideas from different people and then they re recreate this and make it our own. So I love that you guys, you know, use some of the ideas and you decided to use other things that you saw uh, in the presentation to create your own voice and vision. And I really appreciate you guys all um, keep doing art, keep doing art, because we need to see new artists in the world, new artists, new creative uh, spirits. Um, and uh, I thank everybody for participating today, parents and also um, the children. Thank you very much. And I will see you guys soon. Bye, thank you. <laughs>